a quick welcome back to Mike MG, who rejoins us on Patreon. If you're looking for some behind the scenes fun and other random stuff, check out the link at the end of the video. Welcome back to a second helping of pause mode as we dive back into the laser active system, this time with a full review of one of the best games on the platform, Manhattan Requiem. However, to understand this game, we need to go back to where it all began in Liberty Town. No, not city. Town. Liberty Town is home to one Detective J.B. Harold, whose first outing in the console world was on the Tomographic 16 CD with Murder Club. A Mr. Robbins is murdered, and it's up to JB to investigate all known entities and locations to extract the needed evidence and testimony to find the killer. For modern gamers, the premise is essentially the same setup as games like Phoenix Wright, only there's no court involved, only a lot of police work, and traveling. As you meet each new person, you had, a quest you had to question them, creating dialogue trails that begin to overlap with other characters. As you went through the paces, you'd eventually be granted warrants to search premises. That said, the more important factor here is the initial meeting between J.B. Harold and a 24-year-old woman named Sarah Shields. In Murder Club, Sarah is a pianist at a local restaurant, and while her beginnings are essentially plain, her past is deeply troubling. One of the first facts you discover in Murder Club is that Sarah was raped, with the assailant never found. This early discovery was the cause of real-world controversy, as the matter had never really been covered in a console game before, especially not in such a forward fashion. This was before any type of rating system was in place, so one can imagine the thought of a young gamer asking their parent what rape was. With Sarah, though, her story would not end there, which brings us to Manhattan Requiem. The game begins with a letter from JB's friend Jed, who informs you of Sarah's supposed suicide, falling from an apartment complex in New York. After learning too many facts aren't adding up, JB is hired out by Jed to help him solve the case of Sarah's death, and more importantly, why her life insurance policy could be awarded to a second Sarah Shields. Having enjoyed the original and the Turbo Duo, you can imagine the excitement I had upon finally having Manhattan's Laserdisc in my grubby, pudgy hands. Considering the cost requirements of the Laser Active mentioned in the previous pause mode, let me show you what a $1,400 upgrade gets you. Sexy, isn't it? Nothing outshines barely colored still images than actual photography still images. Let's jump in. The game's opening and multiple confessions are fully filmed sequences with the developer bringing in various footage of New York to help make everything seem authentic. While the streets and areas are real, the locations are not. From a graphic design standpoint, the artist did a fantastic job on creating fake signs for the various businesses you visit, even if they didn't always spell the names right. Like in Murder Club, you'll need to interview a lot of characters to get to the bottom of Sarah's murder, but here in Manhattan, things are a little different. Since this isn't your jurisdiction, you can't get search warrants like you could in Liberty Town. This is one of the weirder angles of the game, since despite the menu option being in every single location, in reality there are only two rooms you will ever be allowed to investigate for clues. The catch is that the evidence isn't all presented at once, so you might, may find two items in Sarah's room on the first go, but you won't find more pieces until you gain contextual clues from the various discussions. Several pieces of evidence are also tied to characters rather than their locations, which can be a bit confusing at first. Both games are completely text-based in their exploration, so having excellent comprehension skills and logical puzzle-solving skills are mandatory. This is also what draws you into the game so well. It's just you and your brain. No arrow pointing to the way, no map marker to follow, and no companion spouting out advice. Like reading a good book, but it's up to you to figure out what order the pages are in. Progress is made as you bounce back and forth between folks, and as the story gets further and further down the rabbit hole, so does the time it takes to get them to confess. In the early hours of play, you'll have multiple people providing new details with multiple changes each. Once you get to the end of the game, it will come down to a lot of back and forth between a specific set of characters, literally looking for a single sentence change out of dozens of choices. Once the final pieces are in place, the game treats you to movie quality footage of the characters confessing their crimes. Replaying it for the video, the total game time was 20 hours, but it could probably whittle down considerably on a playthrough knowing exactly what and who you can skip. With the gameplay engrossing, but clearly simple, the rest of the game's assets must pick up the slack, and they do so pretty well for the most part. The voice acting is about 90% really well done, and the other 10% cringeworthy. The dialogue, though spoken correctly, oftentimes doesn't match the on-screen text. 
part of that problem is that like all great dual language 90s games, the translation seems to have been done on the Japanese side of things, which welcomes a hilarious amount of verb tense problems and random typos. Roughly three or four lines are also written in the wrong sex, which means females are being referred to as he's and vice versa. The game's music, despite only being a handful of melodies, fits right in. Think of it as a soothing white noise rather than a stage music. A nice touch is that the tracks will change based on the mood of the person being spoken to. There's standard dialogue, a suspect tune, and the confessional melody. In default settings, the appropriate musical score will actually wait several seconds to play, adding an assumed intentionally nice touch to the interrogation approach. Hearing the confessional track finally pop after verbally assaulting someone for a few hours has the same effect as hearing a trophy or achievement ding. Oddly enough, the game's strongest asset is its option screen. By default, the game uses voiceovers to deliver the conversation along with the on-screen text. You can fully manipulate both sides along with the visual clues to provide the best experience for yourself. As an example, the Laserdisc accesses each dialogue response separately. If you turn the voiceovers off and then speed up the text display, you can essentially speedrun the game. The difference between with and without voice is about four voiceless interviews can be conducted in the same time span as one voiced one. There's also the Bar Breath Lounge, one of the most Japanese things ever put into a video game. Here you can play blackjack for no other reason than to relax, while you can set up the game's soundtrack as a virtual jukebox. I mentioned the Japanese angle because it was unintentionally discovered, getting a significant amount of wages in-game will cause the game to load a random image as a sort of prize. While some of them are fairly innocent, like a picture of a squirrel or the city, as you gain more winnings, the images become that of women in lingerie blended into various city images. Of what value this adds to the overall game, I don't know, but if you have a standard, not laser active disc player, you can actually toss the disc into that and simply watch them as a slideshow. So, yeah. As an overall package, Manhattan Requiem is a fantastic interactive crime novel that began a legacy of JB Herald games. Sadly, the US missed out on the next two games, Kiss of Murder and DC Connection. The fifth game, Blue Chicago Blues, probably the ultimate laser active game, would be the only other follow up to Wash Ashore. Now the really fun part. This is where I normally tell you about what you would should expect to pay for it in the used market, but screw that. Instead of spending $900 to play it, you can spend 5 on your iPhone to play a revamped version. The publishers have swapped in all new modernized sprite artwork for the characters, but shockingly they still use the original location and evidence imagery, including retaining the typos. From the demo I sampled for the episode, the user interface is a bit less intuitive, but it does alert you when new people or items become available, which would be a godsend in the final hours of the game. So skip tomorrow's coffee run and grab yourself a fantastic de detective story. It's really worth it. That said, another pause mode is in the back. If I'm not re-addicted to Murder Club, you should see me back on the PlayStation site in two weeks. As always, leave your questions and comments below, share the video with friends, and have yourself an amazing week. I'll see you next episode.